Shalom family, assalamu alaikum, all praises be to the most high. I'm actually at work, so you will hear some noise in the background, please bear with me. Now I know for the most part, a lot of the things that was presented to us, it has become the norm in our lives. You know, we believe everything that was presented to us through the government, through, you know, the religious institution. And of course, our parents play a very big role in our lives. Right, whatever was taught to them, they teach it. They teach it to us, right? And then we teach it to our kids. So I was um, reading the Bible, and um, I was trying to study the Bible just for the first time, really studying the Bible, just to see exactly what this book is about. Right, the Helio Biblio Sun Book. That's the name of the Bible, Helio Biblio Sun Book. Look it up. And I was reading it and I was noticing because I stay primarily, I focus primarily in what's referred to as the Old Testament, you know, the Book of Remembrance, the Tanakh. I focus primarily on the Tanakh. I don't really rock with the New Testament because I don't know what was wrong with the Old Testament for, for now for them to have a New Testament. And of course, the New Testament, you can see the enemy or the oppressor's hand, you know, basically in the so-called New Testament where Jesus said to love your enemy, turn the other cheek, obey your early master and all that other crap, right? But I was studying the Old Testament and um, even in the book of Deuteronomy, that's like my favorite book in the Old Testament to go to. Right. And I usually focus on the 15th verse to Deuteronomy chapter 28, the 15th verse, all the way to the 68th verse. And as I was reading it, right, I started to say to myself, like, OK, um, it was told or it was said in the Bible that, you know, the Israelite disobeyed the law, statutes, and commandments. And this is one of the reasons why the Mosai have decided to put them into bondage, right? Into slavery. Then you read other passages in the Bible where Israel was slaves. You know what I'm saying? You know, we had a, we've been through a lot of slavery in the Bible. And I was saying to myself, okay, if we are black people, right? They call us black. We're not black. We're different shades of brown. But let's say, for argument's sake, if we are the people of the Bible, the Israelites of the Bible, right? And throughout the, the Old Testament, we were we were we were enslaved, right? We were in we were we were in bondage, except for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the only one, believe it or not, was never enslaved, right? But remember, he was supposed to be from the tribe of Judah. I don't know how he could have been from the tribe of Judah, because his father was the Holy Spirit, whoever that is, right? The father wasn't Joseph, but okay, so he was the only one that wasn't in slavery, and. If you think about it, right, Jesus Christ is identified as a so-called white man. That's the image anyway that they portray him to be. But of course, if you read Revelation 1 or Revelation um, 114, it'll tell you something totally different. But anyway, I was saying to myself, like, OK, so throughout the Bible, we were in captivity. We were, we were enslaved. Right. Then it tells you in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, that we was going to go back into Egypt again on ships. And I was saying, OK, so. Who had the Bible before we actually had the Bible? I'm not talking about the, the scrolls or the Torah. I'm talking about the so-called Holy Bible that's presented to us today. The King James Version, the NIV. Who had these books before we did? Because remember, at one point, our ancestors, wasn't, our ancestors wasn't allowed to read the Bible, which means that there were Bible, you know, during slavery, that our ancestors was not permitted to read. So... If these devils, right, these, these hybrids are basically reading from a book and going from a script that's in a book, in the Bible, right? Going from a script telling you that, you know, the Israelite was going to go back into slavery again on ships. So could it be possible that these devils actually wrote this shit? And I, I, this is just a question, family. I know a lot of y'all get sensitive when we question the Tanakh or question the Bible. You know, but I'm just asking a question. It's a fucking question, okay? Could it be possible? Because remember, they had our records for thousands and thousands of years, right? They took our identity. They stole our information. They stole our records, our oral law, and they rewritten this shit. They rewrote this shit. Because even when you read the New Testament, it says, the book according to Matthew, the book according to Luke, the book according to this. That means according to these people, these are their accounts, right? His story. Because, you know, when you go to war... And the, the one that the victor usually rewrite history to fit their narrative, right? So that's why they call it history, his story. That's what it basically means. So I was just saying, like, could it be possible that they wrote this shit in the book so that when these 
these hybrids, right? You know who I'm talking about, talking to, talking about these wicked ones, the so-called slave master. When they read this shit on a Sunday that they worship the sun, sun god Horus, right? They, it reinforces the fact that it's okay to enslave us because the Mormons believe that we were cursed, right? We, we, we were turned from white to, to black. And this is why they look down upon us. So could it be possible they are, justi they are justifying slavery? They are justifying the treatment of so-called black Hebrew Israelites because they have wrote this shit in this book called the Bible. So when they see it, they can justify it. And of course, there's other passages in the, in the, in the, book, in the book, right? In the Bible that tells you that if one day we was, we we're going to be redeemed and, you know, the most High is going to pour out his judgment on or God is going to pour out his judgment on them for what they have done. So that kind of give us some kind of hope, you know what I mean? Pacify us a little bit, make us feel like, OK, even though for, that for hundreds of years or thousands of years, we've been going through this shit. You know, one day we're going to be, you know, we're going to get some kind of retribution and we're going to be free from these devils. Right. And I'm sure the slaves back then. Like 400 years ago, you know, they, they read the, when they was able to read the Bible, somebody read the Bible for them. They was, they felt the same way that before they die and shit, right? There was going to be redeemed. Their salvation was going to come. And I'm sure remember when Jesus Christ said, there shall some be standing here, shall not taste death. Remember that, that, that video I made where he lied and shit saying what Jesus was speaking now, family says, said basically, matter of fact, this is the scripture right here. There shall some, and I'm a paraphrase. You can read it for yourself, right? They're basically not going to taste death until he, Son of man coming to the kingdom or whatever, right? But all of them died because, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, according to what he said, right? They wasn't going to taste death. And I'm sure he was speaking to a multitude of people. And I'm sure none of them made it. They all died because you don't hear any accounts of them getting raptured up and shit like that. Except for, uh, uh, what is it, what's the name? Lazarus was the only one that was risen from the grave according to the story, right? But what I'm saying, family, is this, right? I believe personally that this is why it was easy for them to do what they did to us and continue to do what they do. And a lot of us want reparation. They're not going to give us no reparation because the Bible tells you that we are under a curse. The Bible tells you, remember, these are the people that wrote the Bible. Now, I know a lot of y'all hate when I say that the white man wrote the Bible under the inspiration of God. Which God? Because there are many gods. God is a title family. Okay. Now, it is hard. It is very hard for us to, to move away or to uh, take ourselves away from the religious institute, right? The Bible, for example, because this is all we know. It's almost like when you're in jail, right? Like my brother, he was in prison for 23 years, my twin brother, right? And he didn't see any way out. So the only thing that he could have done was to find religion. He be, now he's a Christian. Now he's finally out. He, got, he came out eventually and shit, right? But... He was a Christian for, for like, I would say half of his life in jail. Half the time he was in jail, he was a Christian. He was a pastor. And I was saying to myself, okay, so you're in church. Yeah, you, you're conducting a church in, in jail, in prison. And you're preaching and teaching the Bible and giving people hope. And you yourself are still in prison. So if you're doing God's work, right, according to the Bible, why wouldn't God show, why took you, why took God 23 years? And again, I'm using their God, not, not the God of the Hebrew Israelite, right? Not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm talking about their God. Why took his God that long to get him out of prison? And, and, and what's so crazy, family, I'm going to share something with y'all. Now he's in um, immigration detention because when you, leave, when you get out of prison now, they can say, okay, well, you're not a citizen. Now we can deport you. And we actually were citizens because when we came to, to America and shit, we was underage. And, we, you know, my mother and father, they fought for their citizenship. And that, you know, made basically, you, technically you become a citizen when, you know, under your parents, under age. But now they're saying, no, nah, -uh. she was supposed to have some kind of proof that she filed for us as well. You know what I'm saying? So now he's incarcerated again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm saying to myself, damn. You know, this these, this Christian God is a horrible motherfucking God because I'm like, damn, you praying to Jesus and you praying to the Christian God. Well, they said Jesus is God. They praying to Jesus as God. And he ain't doing nothing for them, for, for them, when many of these, these black Christians, right? So, again, family, I don't know, man. I guess I'm on a mission and shit. I'm trying to, to prove that we really don't need a book 
to go by because the same book that we are supposed to be go governed by, the same book is the same book the fucking oppressors, the wicked ones, are reading from. Right? You got the slaves reading from the Bible and you got the slave master reading from the Bible. So how does that work? If that's supposed to be our book, because a lot of y'all get excited, oh, this is our book, this is your... No, it's not our book. It's their book, which with maybe our information and shit, but it ain't, it ain't our book. Because there's no way in hell... They're going to treat us the way they treat us, burn us on logs, castrate our men, hang us on trees, rape our women and children, men and animals, too. And they're going to say, OK, well, we're going to give you a way to salvation. They love us that much. Right. So they hate us. On one hand, they hate us enough to do everything they have done to us and continue to do to us. Gun us down with our hands in the air. Right. Gave the Tuskegee Airmen syphilis. Right. Um, literally wiped out towns. You got the, the punch bowl. Right. You got all these massacres that they have done to us. Right. Black Wall Street. So they hate us enough to, to do what they do to us. But they love us enough to give us a way to salvation. All we have to do is follow the, the Bible. Right. The Old Testament, the blood sacrifice. And that's another thing I want to talk about, because I've read in the Bible where the most I said, and this is the most I speaking, said obedient is better than sacrifice. Right. And I'm saying to myself, why are we killing innocent animals for, for sin? For, for, the, for the deeds that we have done, we are punishing an animal, an innocent animal that had nothing to do with it because we want to go out there and sin. And if, and if back in the days when we sin, we was put to death, then why is he allowing us to, to, to away, right? I'm, I'm talking about this God of the Bible because the God of the Bible is not who you think he is, family. The God of the Bible is really Lucifer. I'm telling you, family, it sounds crazy because no matter how much you Christians and Hebrew Christians pray to Jesus Christ, a.k.a. Lucifer, the morning star, right? Is the more your condition remains or if not get worse. My son got murdered in 2021. His mother was a diehard Christian. She used to say she prayed every morning, every day, right? For Jesus to cover her kids with his blood. And that's why I don't want no motherfucking Jesus covering my kids with blood. Because usually when when, you, when blood is presented, that means it's, you know, some form of injury, right? So I don't want Jesus covering my kids with no blood. Because every time that shit happens, something that's something, you know, it's blood sacrifice. This is why you see so many abortions, clinics in the black community. So many gang-related murders. Because these gang, believe it or not, are actually under the influence of Lucifer, a.k.a. Satan. AKA Jesus Christ. And this is why you see them killing each other for no reason, killing each other over a name of a, you know, in the name of a corner of a, over, a, over a color, right? Ops call themselves ops and shit because you, you live on old block and this nigga live on, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense. These entities, they thrive off of violence. They thrive off of pain. They thrive. They literally like, like energy vampires, no matter how, you know what I'm saying? The, the more negative the, the, the situation is, is the more is, is the more they, they get from it. This is why you see on the news, they're always talking about gloom and doom and wars and rumors of war, because that's how they, they when you when you react to these these news and shit. That's why I don't watch the news. I haven't watched the news in almost, what, two, three months, because I realize what they're doing. The shit with Trump going on with you know with him and it's just they like like news that's what it's called news broad broadcast so they're broadcasting these negative imagery and shit and you it feeds on your emotions and then you solicit some kind of emotion based on what you're seeing and hearing and that's what they feed that's what they harvest i'm telling you these fucking entities are not normal they look like us you know what i'm saying they talk like us they shit like us they eat like us but they're not us because that's like, like i would like make the reference like the comparison, like you see two dogs, right, walking down the street. You see a German Shepherd and a Doberman or a pit bull. They're all, according to, to you know, to, 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 to what we know as dogs, right, canines, but they're totally different species. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and in many cases, you can actually interbreed these these different species of, of, of dogs. And that's where, you, that's where you get your mutts from, your crossbreed from. So, yes, even though they can mix with us, you know, melanated people and have offsprings, right? But it doesn't mean that they're like us, okay? So I'm questioning the Bible a lot because I really believe that the original record, the original scrolls is out there somewhere. They have stolen so many things from us, so many inventions, so many ideas, 
They have stolen our identity, calling themselves the people of the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Talking about that little landmass over there that they're fighting over right now in Palestine. Talk about that's the land, you know, that was promised to the Israel. No, the land of Canaan was promised to us. And it's, we're going to get way more than that little piece of land mass over there. As a matter of fact, I believe, I believe, you know, let me, not, let, me, let me not even go down that rabbit hole for right now. But yeah, family. So again, am I saying that, the, am I discounting the Bible 100%? Absolutely not. Because there's a lot of great parables, a lot of great metaphors and shit in the Bible. And there may be some accounts, you know, literal accounts in the Bible. But I, I'm telling you, family, for the most part, I see so-called white man hands in the Bible. Right. They have manipulated. They're not they're not going to give you the original. That's why they always call it a version. King James version, this version, that version, because it's a version of a story of a story. By the time it gets to you, it's not the original version. OK, I just want you to understand that. And that's why it's easy for us. If we if we really believe if we keep on reading and believe that we are under a curse, we're actually manifesting these curses on us. Did you know that shit? You know that we can manifest things in our lives. So we, if we really keep on reading the Bible over and over and studying the shit, and we keep on seeing where why you why why you think that when when they show these 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 these, these movies right about us about black people right where we, basically anytime you hear anything about black people when we used to watch the shit on, on you know like movies about black people it's always in a negative light it's always we were slaves we were pimps we were hoes we were drug dealers you know so you ever notice that shit so if they keep on showing this shit over and over to the world. And even to, to to us as black people, we keep seeing this shit. We're subliminally we're going to believe that's all we are about, and then then we're going to start manifesting this shit, right? In this negative life, if we keep on reading that we were cursed and under, and we was in bondage, and and we we're supposed to be in this condition that we're in, and we are manifesting this shit. We're literally manifesting this shit in our lives every fucking day, and this is why these devils are able to literally control us because we go to church religiously every Sunday. I don't understand why it take you fifty years. Of going to church to know God, right? It don't take it don't take more than a week to read the whole Bible. So what exactly is he, is his pastor teaching y'all every Sunday? Why that y'all have to go to church every fucking Sunday to hear what? What's what's going to be new this week about the Bible that was written over two thousand years ago according to the story, right? It don't take that long for someone to teach me because when you go to college, right? A lot of you, let's say you go to college for nursing. The average fucking nursing uh, course is what four years, and then if you want to go get your your bachelor, your associate, then you you know you go back to school. But it doesn't take fifty years for you to learn the Bible. You got people going to fucking school for like let's say tops eight years to become doctors, wealthy. You know what I'm saying? Making money, it's engineers and shit. It don't take you no fifty years to be going to church. But you know why we go to church every Sunday? Because we're under a fucking spell. We're under a spell, and every Sunday we got to go and renew that spell, right? We got to go back, and that's why they lure you in and shit. You you feel you you feel the need to go to church every Sunday, not because you really have to go. You just feel drawn to the church because for many of us, we don't have anything going on in our lives. The only time you get some kind of um, attention is when you're in church and shit from other brothers and sisters, of, you know, in the faith. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the main reason why a lot of people go to church because in the church. They acknowledge, you know what I'm saying? There's someone, there's somebody, but in their home, they're nothing. And a lot of us, excuse me, I'm under the weather. A lot of us, um, it's on social media every day, taking selfies and putting on an image that, you know, that's not you, you know what I'm saying? Putting on makeup, wig and weeds and all this shit, taking these fucking selfie, posting on so so social media, looking to get likes and shit because we don't have no self-esteem. And again, what what I believe is this: a lot of us are holding on to this this fucking religion called Christianity because that's all we got. Without that, we don't have anything. You know what I'm saying? We don't have anything to look for. We just look for that day for Jesus Christ to come and rapture us, right? <laughs> According to the story and shit. I'm sure my ancestors were looking for Jesus Christ to come and rapture them up in their days. The same way we're doing it today, I'm sure our kids, maybe 10, 20 years from now, are gonna be saying, "Where's Jesus Christ at?" This motherfucker ain't never coming because guess what? He never existed, family. Never existed. All right? And a lot of stories in the Bible, yes, it's, it's, it's beautiful and all that. But when you really study the Bible, when you really read the shit and analyze it, you start to say, wait a minute. There's so many discrepancies in the Bible. You know what I mean? The Mosai is in that Bible, but he's vague. He's, you really have to listen. You have When I say listen, you have to 
First of all, pray to the most. I ask them for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, a discerning spirit. Spirit, and when you read that Bible, you have to be still. And we, and and and, and He will speak to you. He will show you where He is in that book, because He is in the book. He is in the Tanakh. He really is in the Tanakh. But He's, I would say, vague. Not necessarily because He's, you know, He's not the Almighty. It's because these devils have made sure that His presence is in the book. But it's it's it's, it's the dear God of this world, Lucifer is more pronounced in this book. I'm telling you, family, the God of the Bible that requires blood sacrifice is none other than Lucifer. And it got to the point now, he don't want no more humans. I mean, animal sacrifice. Guess what he wanted? Um, a human sacrifice, according to him, his son. So if, if God can sacrifice his son, right, for us, then we will sacrifice our kids for him. And that's through abortion. Think about this shit. Shalom.